welcome to the Alpine Valley School podcast. I'm your host, Mark Gallivan, a staff member and graduate of Alpine Valley School. It's been a long time since we've published a new episode, and I'm so glad to be back. Our little school continues to thrive, going strong into the last half of our 28th year of operation. I also have another exciting announcement to share, which we'll get into in a moment. This is the 59th episode of the Alpine Valley School podcast, and you can find show notes for this episode, including links and other details, at alpinevalleyschool.com slash podcast slash EP59 for episode 59. Before we jump in, let me tell you a little more about our school. Alpine Valley School is a private K-12 school located in Denver, Colorado, that follows a self-directed democratic education model, also known as the Sudbury model. On this podcast, we discuss our model of education, share stories from day-to-day life at school, and interview families involved in our program on their experiences. The exciting announcement that I mentioned is that this summer, the summer of 2024, Alpine Valley School will be hosting the Global Self-Directed Democratic School Conference at our facility in Colorado. For the first time in several years, at least since the pandemic, schools like ours from all over the world will converge on our campus for four days of discussion, sharing practices, and being in community with one another. We've already had dozens of attendees register for the event, including a group from Mexico that is also planning to attend our startup symposium an additional event we're offering just for schools like ours that are in their beginning stages or experiencing a new beginning, which is taking place the day before the official conference kickoff. If you are a staff member, student, or advocate of self-directed democratic learning, I sincerely hope you'll consider joining us. You can learn more and register for the conference taking place in July 2024 on our website at alpinevalleyschool.com slash conference. Early in my son's young life, we realized that there was something different about him. Several somethings, actually. And it became increasingly obvious that he needed more and different care than my partner and I had provided to his two older children. A bushel of diagnoses followed, many capital letters that were assigned to our four-year-old, ADHD, ASD, etc., that would follow him around for the rest of his life, whether he liked it or not. I already knew that I wanted him to attend Alpine Valley School, as I had. My partner and I had planned on this even before he was born, and I was told over and over again by the so-called experts that this plan of action simply would not work out. He needs more structure, they told me. He will not do well left to his own devices. He can't function the same way other children do. And while it is true that my son has his own unique set of gifts and challenges, as we all do, I'm glad to say that the rest of their advice proved unfounded. My son started as a student at Alpine Valley School when he was five years old, four years ago now, and in doing so, continued the complex, challenging, and joyous path of growing into a young adult in a community full of lots of different people. He has a group of caring friends, is a caring friend himself, and pursues his interests wholeheartedly. He has also learned a great deal of things, including, despite a myriad of disabilities, how to learn to read. He has found a balance of structure that works well for him and him alone, and while he does continue to bump up against boundaries, other people's, and those of the school community in general, he is learning gently how to respect boundaries without bringing any of the stigmas or stories about what kind of person he is along for the ride. It was in part because of my own experiences as the parent of a neurodiverse child that I wanted to record this interview that I share today with my colleague Addison Alt. Addison is a fairly new staff member here at Alpine Valley School and worked as a special education teacher prior to joining our school. She is as kind, thoughtful, compassionate, intelligent, and dedicated a person as you could possibly want and has a particular gift for empathizing with the challenges of all others. It probably won't surprise you to learn that Addison, given her experience in mainstream schooling, has a lot to say about the subject of supporting students with neurodiversity and people with disabilities in general. I think you'll really benefit from her perspective. Here's Addison. Hi, I'm Addison. 
I am a new staff at the Alpine Valley School. This is my first full year as a staff member. My background, uh, before I discovered Alpine Valley, I was embarking on a career in education and eventually had pretty much settled on knowing that I wanted to work with kids with uh, disabilities, but was troubled by the programs that were available in the school system. And then once I found Alpine Valley, it was love at first sight. It was exactly where I knew I wanted to be. And in large measure, it was because I knew that I could get to work with all types of kids and all the kids that I wanted to work with. I know so many kids here. The The parent that that told me about Alpine Valley in the first place was a parent of a kid who was in special ed in the district. And he had a terrible, terrible experience in special ed and also had been, he and his family had been pumped full of uh, the the had been insistently told what his limitations were, what his, you know, abilities were going to stop at. And when he was here, he did such cool things, you know, and he built his own computer. And uh, if anything, I wish that he'd had more time in, in an environment like this. A lot of families uh, with students with disabilities are very concerned about the lack of structure here. I myself am somebody that historically has had to overcome a steep learning curve in terms of running my own life without somebody imposing a structure on it. I think that that makes it even more powerful to have the experience from childhood to be able to figure out where you need your own supports, you know, um, and be able to advocate for those. Our day doesn't have absolutely no structure. Obviously, we do have, you know, we, you come in every day. We have our JC. Um, you can be a part of clubs that meet at a regular time. And if so, if you're really wanting structure, you can put it there. Um, I think of one student in particular that uh, we've had that he likes scheduled out his day. He knew that that's how he likes to be. He is, that's the, what he created for himself. So as scary as it might be to have a brain that works differently in a day that doesn't have a top-down imposed structure, the kids that really want something out of the structure of their day, they can figure out how to ask for it. And we are prepared to help and support and think creatively about how to give them what they want. There are infinite life skills that I've seen people come away from our school with. And a big one, just because I just mentioned it, a big one is knowing how to reach out to your community for the things that you need. Having a goal and being able to meet that goal on your own standards, I think that is radically powerful. Being satisfied with with your own drives and with your own performance, whether you, whether that, uh, when you perform something, whether you're satisfied or dissatisfied is up to you. I think that, uh, in terms of smaller practical life skills, I love that our day is so open that you can learn how to cook yourself some pasta. You know, I know how many adult people do I know that have gone off to live on their own and are like, Oh my gosh, I have no idea how to feed myself. And you can learn that kind of thing here, and a lot of people do. As alienated and atomized as our life ways are currently, it is so powerful, too, to uh, spend your days among lots of people who are also living their own lives and knowing how to reach out to them and ask them for things and say when you're bothered, you know, about something that they're doing. Living in community is a messy, messy thing that we draw so, so much strength and satisfaction from as people. My substitute placements were all over the place uh, for a long time. I got to taste a little bit of every different program that's available in public schools, all ages, and I wound up liking, I mean, I liked all of them, really. I liked all of the kids that I got to be with, but very much was already frustrated with the limits 
that the uh, programs that I was a part of placed on the kind of environment that I would have been able to create as a teacher. I had a long-term assignment uh, in special ed where I got to really take a longer look behind the scenes at what it's like to run a special ed program. I was so deeply troubled (laughs) by everything about how that program was run. I thought that of, uh, of all of the many, many concerns and complaints I had with the uh, main track school system, it was intensified, certainly, uh, within the special program that uh, I was a part of then. It felt exceptionally prison-like, and the surveillance that I already felt was so constant back when I was a student in just gen ed classes was absolutely turned up to a hundred. It was just having this direct, observable, sad, <laughs> detrimental effect on all of the kids that I cared about so much. So so before I found Alpine Valley, I was uh, still intending to go get my master's degree in special ed. But like I said, there was this huge tension I was already feeling because of the way that these programs are set up in the first place. And even if I'd been a teacher with my own classroom, I was seeing the uh, limits to the kind of relationships that I could build with my students. And namely, I knew that the relationship that I wanted to build with them, I wanted it to be a consensual relationship. And there was almost nothing about the way those programs are required to run that would have allowed for that. One thing that's challenging about being a parent of a kid with a disability or with neurodivergence is that disabilities and neurodivergence are such an infinite constellation of experiences. It is a huge, huge bucket that's supposed to hold so many different things. And then even within a single diagnosis, there's infinity different ways to be a person with that diagnosis, right? It's just one small little fragment of your personhood. If there are specific things that a kid here needs, they can ask for it and get specific supports. All kids can do that. Think that uh, kids that come here, it is so much, it's not just the only thing that our school sees about you. And that can be some of the healthiest and most supportive things in and of itself because they have the freedom to explore every different dimension of their personhood. What I'm seeing here with my own two eyes now that I'm working here is, you know, obviously all I have is anecdotal evidence, but that that our kids absolutely work well together regardless of what Um, diagnosis they would have outside of our school or that they do have. I want there to be more resources for families to answer their questions about their, their children thriving in a school like ours, because I think if we were to compile the wisdom of the various neurodivergent and disabled people that have already gone through our school and schools like ours, we would have a lot of information already. On this very podcast, my favorite podcast, the Alpine Valley School podcast, you shared a speech given by a parent whose daughter had a very serious diagnosis, um, like a a life limiting diagnosis is what they had perceived, and the how the messaging of other schools had put her so on guard for schools not to accept her daughter that she'd been warned that her daughter would never have friends, that she would be incapable of regulating herself. Um, And then what she saw was, you know, was the ways that her daughter was able to grow tremendously, that she made friends, uh, and that she was held responsible for her own actions. People with disabilities are doubly are exceptionally infantilized. And so I think that of anybody, the ability to answer for yourself and to decide how you spend your own time is exceptionally healing 
and exciting and growth inducing. And that story, I think, exemplifies that opportunity that, you know, she'd had already so many adults who had decided what her limitations were. And as soon as she was able to be in a community herself, she proved those limitations wrong. So I think one of the huge advantages I see about an environment like Alpine Valley is whenever we're whenever we get new people, they add a little extra spice of some kind to the soup that is here. We know the ways that this can be an exceptionally good place for kids with disabilities, but we don't have the literature for it yet. Every single kid, obviously, that uh, we get to have in our communities is a gift to our community. It alters the makeup of that community and makes it richer. And so as many different minds and as many different types of minds and as many different backgrounds that we can get, the stronger we are. Our model is where praxis happens. It's where theory meets reality. You know, it's where the messy stuff of actually making your good and beautiful ideas about freedom real. And so I think that that's something that belongs to everyone that wants to try it and that wants to have it. Anyone that is attracted to this kind of schooling, I really hope they give it a shot. Thank you so much to Addison for taking the time to record this insightful interview. If you'd like to look at some of the resources that Addison mentioned, including the episode of our podcast that she talked about, you can find more information on the show notes page at alpinevalleyschool.com slash podcast slash EP 59 for episode 59, which includes a list of links. If you have an idea for an episode, a question, or a comment, drop us a line at podcast at alpinevalleyschool.com or reach out to us on social media. If you'd like to join us this summer for the Global Self-Directed Democratic School Conference, please check out our website at alpinevalleyschool.com slash conference. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to listen in. I'm Mark Gallivan. This is the Alpine Valley School Podcast, and we'll be back again soon with more stories of real learning for real life.